You can see the site. The site for this project uh, is part of the medical center. It's located on the major artery that leads into the downtown Chicago, which you see on the right, the right hand side of the screen along the Eisenhower Expressway. Um, so an interesting site in that it's kind of uh, uh, at the entrance to the, to the center of Chicago. It's part of a much larger medical uh, complex of other, uh, other uh, it's a regional medical center. Russia is one of the, one part of that. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the hospital, which you see at the top, but this was a, an even larger project of, of building a parking structure, uh, a new loading facility, an outpatient building, which is the OAB, and then the new hospital. I'll talk about the hospital, but uh, it was all, uh, kind of a rethinking of the major part of the Rush University campus. Uh, interesting, the, the, there's a central receiving uh, plant at the, in the parking, and a and a tunnel that has all the materials management that serves the hospital with a robotic system. So uh, the robots, well, it, 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 materials come in at the loading dock and uh, it's all entirely robotic. It goes up through the, the tunnel and up through robotic elevators into the bed tower uh, where, where it's picked up. I can't take advantage, I can't take a credit for that as an architect, but I thought it was a very interesting system. You can see the uh, site for the hospital, the existing hospital is to the right, so in a way this is a, uh, an addition to an existing uh, hospital that has both beds and diagnostic facilities in it. Uh, you can see the relationship near the finished building uh, to the downtown area of Chicago. This is a diagram of just how the building was conceived, the existing bed, uh, existing bed tower and existing diagnostics. Uh, creating a new, larger diagnostic base that uh, t that ties directly and extends the diagnostic areas in the existing hospital, and then a bed tower on top of the diagnostic base that that feeds down into the existing uh, diagnostic plate. Uh, between the two, between the, our site, when we started looking at the site, we found that there was a 60-foot area that we couldn't build in because there is an existing kitchen and operations facility in the lower level. Uh, so we had to uh, create a kind of gap between the two buildings, which actually we took advantage of because it became the entrance to the building. It actually was a good, a good constraint to have because it allowed us to, to, to uh, provide some public space uh, between the two buildings and a new entry. Uh, and also uh, roof gardens on the top. I think very hard to uh, and these medical, most of these medical centers are very, com uh, very compact uh, uh, areas with buildings that have accumulated over time, very little open space. They're called medical campuses, but they really aren't campuses at all. It's sort of a misnomer because they have no open space. So we wanted to create some, some sense of open space, and we used the roofs to do that since we were building out entirely to the site. The building ha has a strong presence. It's in the midst of not only the highway, but a, a whole series of infrastructure. So it's kind of a strong uh, kind of ending point for the entire medical center and has a strong presence along the freeway. The building is then composed of basically two parts, which are expressed differently, the bed tower on the top and the diagnostic plate below, and then the f first floor is then public, public facilities and emergency uh, department. Each one had its own uh, took its own shape based on function. Uh, the, the base of the building uh, is different and it, it changes due to function and context because one side faces the freeway, the other side faces uh, a, uh, a street that leads into the medical center which is kind of uh, poorly organized now and we wanted to, uh, by pushing the building in and following the uh, shape of the bed tower, we were able to create some open space and sense of entry into the, into the rest of the medical campus. The evolution of the, the shape of the bed tower started out uh, thinking, uh, it starts out really as a traditional uh, institutional typology, which is the traditional cross plan. Uh, and, uh, with, and for a modern hospital, you need a lot more, this is a teaching hospital, uh, you need a lot more space for uh, uh, teaching facilities as well as the clinical facilities. So 
by, by making a by even deeper core, we were able to kind of transform the traditional cross plan into the shape. But it really is kind of a modification of a, of a typology that's been around for uh, quite a while. And it, we looked at various uh, H shapes, T shapes. I think this, this shape proved to be very efficient in terms of its layout and uh, providing, uh, providing views and light for, for the bed tower. Uh, we had a hard time, well, not a hard time, but we uh, uh, had to convince, uh, since it was kind of an unusual shape, we had to convince the client that it would work, so we actually laid out the bed tower on the tennis court that was on the site. Uh, we also, it was a very interactive process with the client. We had 40 people from our office located on site, so we had a sub-office located uh, so the doctors could stop in every morning and all the models were built there. So it wasn't just a project office for construction, it was a project office entirely from schematics through, through construction. The bed tower itself, you can see uh, the, uh, the beds are in blue. They're all the same, exactly the same unit. They're single-handed, evidence-based design, uh, showed us that uh, the, by ma making every unit exactly the same, uh, it would increase safety, patient safety, because every, every nurse would know exactly uh, how to operate within the, the bed unit. Uh, and it also uh, increases efficiency in terms of how the, how the nursing staff can use the, the, bed, the bed unit. So it, added, it actually added more money, normally bed, Beds are, are double stacked so that so that so the bathrooms uh, back up to each other. So this cost the client a little more money, but it's based on research uh, that was done at the time that uh, that showed the uh, the uh, why why you can why this is a better way of doing things. So you have the the beds on the top, a kind of mechanical area in the center is a kind of reveal, and then the diagnostic area on the on the bottom is a view from the. Uh, the re regional feeder street looking into the gateway uh, space that leads into the medical center. Uh, interior of the bed unit, there is no, uh, again, a kind of move away from traditional uh, bed unit where you have a centralized nursing station. There's dispersed uh, nursing stations. Uh, and areas, there's areas where both patients, staff, and visitors can get together. So it's not just, a, it's not just for the staff, it's we, kind of encouraging kind of a team, a healing team, which includes the patient, the, the visitors, and the staff together. So it's a kind of decentralized idea of a, of a nursing unit. Opening up that all the tips are open so that the corridors end in a view of the city and their uh, either lounge areas or, or uh, conference room areas. The beds themselves are uh, organized uh, and zoned uh, in both directions. Uh, from a, uh, in kind of a direction from door to window. There's a family zone, a patient zone, and a staff zone. Uh, in the other direction, uh, it's zoned for uh, the patient looks at a more of a, uh, uh, a wood wall with patient-oriented facilities, the TV, the, the various uh, wood councils, and, and uh, more of a high-tech wall uh, on the other side. So there's kind of a thinking about layering inside the patient room, which you see here. The, the base of the building, the diagnostic plate, uh, uh, changes from one side to the other. Uh, but these, these plates want, kind of want to be very uh, simple, flexible plates. They contain the surgeries and the other diagnostic areas, which tend to change over time. So they're really kind of loft spaces, but we, but, uh, uh, and that's the blue area. Uh, the other area, which conforms to the shape of the bed tower, is the what the, what the hospital staff called the on-stage area, which is really more the outpatient area, the public area of the hospital. And we wanted to, rather than having a, a simple rectangle with the you know, shape of the uh, butterfly bed tower on top, we wanted to engage the and, and modify the, the, the bed tower uh, to relate to uh, the site, as I mentioned earlier, and the fact that it's uh, more of a public space. You see that here along the entry uh, street. On the other side, uh, which is the highway side, it follows, it follows the, the uh, a kind of more of a, a glazed billboard effect that, 
that relates more to the to the highway. Uh, behind that is the is the surgeries. Uh, you see the existing building on the left, the new building on the right, and the continuation of the intervention surgery platform. So it becomes one continuous uh, surgery platform for functional reasons. And I think something that's forgot about a lot, in, a lot in hospitals is getting daylight into the staff areas as well. Usually they're buried in the middle of deep plates. So, so along that glass wall, which is a north wall, uh, daylight is entered uh, into the into the uh, surgery areas, so the surgeons can and various staff members can have uh, daylighting as well as uh, as the visitor and, uh, and patients. And uh, this is the staff. So there's a two parallel uh, bridge elements that uh, are around the, uh, the uh, lobby uh, element. Uh, so uh, public circulation, staff circulation separated, but both, again, naturally daylit. And then ending on the, the uh, entry pavilion in the middle, um, uh, again, resulting from that uh, condition in, uh, underneath where we have the existing kitchen allowed us to do a, uh, a sort of an infill uh, with a lobby. There are two entrances on the hospital. One is from the ground level. The other is from the fourth floor, which connects to the, an existing garage and an existing bridge. So, there's the, so we created a new lobby at the ground floor, and then there's an exterior courtyard uh, on the fourth floor with another uh, entry uh, check-in area for patients on, on that level as well. So it allows us to get uh, create a sense of place for the a public sense of place for the hospital entry into either the existing or the new building uh, and uh, a kind of quadrangle, if you will, on the uh, fourth level of the hospital. And so, kind of the idea of adding some greenery into the interior. We wanted to add, take actually take literally taken in into the interior uh, of the facility. Uh, that's a view down onto the quadrangle area. We couldn't convince the hospital to actually put greenery inside the hospital because it would have contamination issues. So we kind of reversed the skylight and created a terrarium and brought, brought the green, in, sealed it off from the hospital. It's kind of an interior ter ter terrarium with a, uh, a moss garden and a, a tree, which will uh, change with. So it was a way of still adding some greenery on the inside uh, without compromising uh, some of the functional issues that the client had concern for. A couple more views of the... It's a LEED Gold rated facility. I think it was the largest LEED Gold rated facility in the country at the time. Uh, these hospitals are obviously large energy users. We did try to do, do uh, as much as we could with uh, um, uh, some ideas about sustainability. For instance, here you talk about uh, collecting the co condensation water from the mechanical system, which is uh, quite substantial, and using using that as an uh, as an irrigation for the green roofs and and uh, the occupiable green roofs. Not the the other ones aren't irrigated, as well as the planting on the ground level. And uh, ending with a kind of final view of the building. It does have. Uh, kind of civic presence as a kind of gateway element, which is unusual for hospitals. They normally don't have, uh, they're more functionally driven, but this one, the function and the kind of iconography work together, I think, uh, fairly well. Thank, thank you.